Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another night of NHGP Thursday Night GT1 Racing, coming to you live from the Daytona International Speedway. Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Jack Ivey, Tom Schubeck. Good evening, gentlemen. Evening, Good evening, Kenny. Jack. Hey, Mr. Schubeck, how are you tonight? Good, good. Looking forward to this, as you would say, barn burner. It's nice and dark, too, so we'll be able to see the place burn. A uh, uh, night quality night race. This is going to be really interesting tonight. It is going to be interesting. Unlike in GT2, where we have a nighttime qualifier at Spa, which is the uh, final venue of the GT2 season, and then a daytime race, these boys are uh, they're qualifying and racing in the dark. So a uh, bit of a change here. Going to be a bit of action here, uh, probably corner one and maybe the last corner when they head out onto the big oval. What do you think? Well, let's see. Let's talk about the track, right? So, like you said, turn one, probably one of the tightest turns uh, here uh, on this track. This will this will be where the drivers will be trying to make up time. However, it. it even though the the road the racing surface is wide everybody wants to aim for that inside fence and uh that's where things get a little hairy 12 turns uh you have that whole 8 9 10 11 complex bus stop on the far end the back straightaway that's another pair uh, another uh, opportunity for take t uh overtaking and for losing it also man because you know if you mess up on the entry boy you don't want to get into the grass because that fence back there is real hard yeah, that's yeah, a real, that you know, that, that chicane is, uh, causes problems, uh, to some drivers every time we come to this track, and, uh, I think it's going to be pretty intense, especially lap one, lap two, as the cars are all bunched up until they get themselves strung out. Yeah, that chicane can be wicked, especially with the diversity of cars and, and the way they handle under braking. I mean, you're going in there trying to take every inch, so it's going to be exciting there going through that chicane. Well, take into account these 600 horsepower GT1 cars, right? Coming out of turn six, they get on the throttle right away and they're going through that whole turn seven sweeper. I'm imagining by the time they get down there to that eight, nine entry, you're at least doing 160 miles an hour, if not more, if you've got a low wing setup like I'm sure some of these drivers here tonight might have. I, oh, yeah, I, would, I would have to guess that everybody's really got it set up nice and low. You know, this track is speed is key here and trimmed out i mean i hope these guys have got you know their practice in in the dark uh and i hope it doesn't catch anybody out because we all know it looks a little different uh under the lights rather than the daylight well we also have cold they have cold temperatures to contend with tonight it's only 69 degrees on the track and the ambient's only 57 so it's kind of chilly out there well, that stays the way it is for race time. Uh, you know, watch for guys like Sportelli, uh, maybe even White, to do a double stint. And uh, that, we know that can cause problems later in the race for some of these guys. Wow, Chris Moses out, out with a 38-6. I was just going to mention that, Mr. Schubeck. Oh, wow. Uh, that sure blows away any practice times we saw. And his teammate wow. almost with a 40 flat. Wow, so the, the purple people eaters have done their homework, it looks like. Yeah, it sure looks that way tonight. Uh, Brad Maris, not too far behind Chris, though, just uh, uh, two tenths of a second off that. All right, Al Merriman holding down third right now, so he's uh, putting on a display of some speed here tonight as well. Yeah, they got they got a fast car for here. I think that car would be real good. But so Brad too, you know, with that big Viper power, you know, he's definitely going to be someone to contend with, you know. So it should be really good. And Rich, Rich has got seems to have that that trimmed out really good and it's really hauling the mail too. Yeah, I'm looking for Rich to set down, uh, you know, low 39s and get into those 38s with these top two runners here uh, very shortly because. Uh, uh, he sure looked pretty steady in early practice. Just one more, uh, just taking a look over here at Alex White, who happens to have uh, 
thrown his hat into the uh, proverbial uh, qualifying ring here because uh, he's sitting in P3 right now uh, with a time, oh, P4 now with a time of 139.6. Yep, Mr. Parsons just snatched that P3 right, right from home just as he got it. Yeah, faster faster than we can say it is change it. And Rich just popped into 3-2. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alex should have Alex should have some work cut out for him. He's He's got 40 kilos, but then Moses has got 20. Who else? Ian Jolicor in 10th is carrying 20. And uh, Brian, from his good showing last week, has got 20 also in that big uh, Ford GT. Yeah, you know, last week at Zandvoort, we had White as the winner, uh, Prado in second, and Mongrain in third. And you know that Brian Mongrain keeps on impressing me all season. He's just getting better and better. He just loves that Ford GT, so he's got that thing all hooked up this season. And also, maybe to mention, uh, Marty Marty Urin is also carrying 40 keys, and uh, Andres Prado has uh, 30 keys. And that's a breakdown of who's got some extra love in their car for this race. <laughs> Extra love, I like now, that. Uh, now, I, I forgot to look, guys. I'm sorry, I've been uh, pretty busy this week. Um, uh, do we have any penalties uh, pending? Uh, we actually do have some penalties, and uh, we were going to get into that. So, uh, Marty Uren carrying uh, penalty ballast because of uh, uh, an issue with John Sportelli. Sportelli, he lifted at a, uh, last week, apex of turn 13. Sportelli lift at the apex of the turn, which is normal considering the track conditions. Uren does not collect Sportelli, and oh, I'm sorry, he runs into Sportelli, knocking him into the outside wall with heavy damage. Uh, it was deemed avoidable contact, so uh, Marty Uren plus 40 kilos um, and a couple of contact yeah, points. Yeah, that was a that, yeah, that was a that was a it was a bad situation for everybody there I, um, at the time of that incident. Uh, Sportel was racing, racing door to door with Moses, and you know it was kind of one of those race situations. Um, you know, Marty kind of gambled with and, and paid the piper for it. Yep. Well, it would appear he's paying the piper carrying that extra weight, as it's uh, left him sitting in P11 right now. Which, considering fully 40 kilos on the car, is not. It's not so bad. Certainly not where you want to be, but. Uh... It's not. It's not. It's not so far. It's not so so bad. Well, yeah, if the track the, stays the cool. Was, go ahead, Tom. I was just gonna quick comment. The problem with weight here is with the banking. Um, you know, you you gotta you gotta keep the car off the ground here to go fast. You can't be you can't be throwing sparks here. You gotta really trim it out. Put packers in it. Do what you need to do. Stiffen the suspension to keep it off the ground. Because once you get into those bankings, if you're if you're dragging the plate, you're you're freaking done. Well, I was going to say uh, the extra weight if the track gets uh, extremely hot is not going to help them out either. But being nighttime, we should we should should, but we never know what to expect here with our variable weather. We should experience some cooler temps. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd like to see this race done in the dry. Hot temperatures are low. Either way, I'd like to see it done in the dry because it'll certainly it'll certainly give way to some really good, fast uh, racing here tonight. You're not joking, Ken. I mean, if we, hopefully keep your fingers knock on wood. I got some wood here. I'll knock on it. Let's get this race off in a dry condition because these guys are going to be flying. They are. And uh, I can't help but think that the draft is probably going to play a little bit of a part here tonight as well. Yeah, that's something, you know, we hadn't talked about either. You know, have any of these guys talked? You know, have they said, hey, man, if uh, we get in a situation where we're together, let's let's work with it. Let's run. Let's get away, you know. So it'll be interesting to, see, you know, kind of see. It's like, hey, it looks like. Bippity bip and bippity bip are working together from 10 and they're working their way up through the field, you know Absolutely, you know what that's going to be key You know if we get a, a couple of cars in a breakaway, which we've seen quite often uh, this season You know it's going to be advantageous for the guys behind not to fight but to work together But can that happen at NAGP? I think it can I mean, if the guys really are, you know, there's, there's a lot of these guys, you know, 
hopefully we'll have the foresight that you know hey this is you know we got time here we got an hour and a half you know you know you know you take the gloves off in the last 30 minutes you know but for the in that first hour you know if you got guys that are breaking away from you you know if you can kind of signal to whoever it is somehow whether it be on comms or you know however that hey let's just let's go let's 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 work together and try and catch these guys you know should be interesting well the guys that are usually hang out in the uh, gabby channel which is our saturday uh, channel would have that advantage because they're usually lap yapping like crazy over there on the saturday but other than that hey you know you say uh patience man these guys go from the drop of a hat they don't wait for the last 30 minutes it, as soon as that flag gets dropped these guys are going for it when you take into consideration the level of competition here at nagp there's no there's no surprise really why they would do such a thing yes there are 90 minutes of racing uh when you find yourself in a predicament such as carrying success and or penalty and or penalty ballast perhaps your strategy needs to change but a lot of these folks uh they just want to drive fast and that's all they know and in, they, they understand that in order to be competitive up at the front uh, you really can't take a back seat to many people. You know, I'm taking a look here at the leaderboard. We got uh, Moses, Maris, John Ludden has popped up to three, Roman in fourth, uh, and Aaron Parsons in fifth. And if we take a look at the driver standings right now, Parsons is in the lead with 110 points, Ludden in second with 102, Moses in third with 101, and Maris with 98 this race is really important to these guys tonight that it is uh we are well into the second well into the second half of the season uh with only a couple races left to go and uh this could be a determining factor in the driver championships uh pending the outcome now i'm just going over the leaderboard here kenny you know and i find it really surprising that uh most of these guys these top six drivers here with the uh, exception of John Ludden, have only put in two timed laps. That's interesting. And Prado's only got one timed lap in. So it's, uh, I, I'm a little shocked. I don't, where do you think, Tom? That's, uh, you know, it's, it may be traffic, and you know, that they're just bailing out on those laps and trying to get another one while they have the time. Because, it, you know, it's still, you know, you're looking at what, uh, two, three minutes, three minutes to get a, you know, a good one in, you know, you know, with your out lap and, and the time lap, you know, it's, you know, if somebody bobbles you up a little bit, you know, you gotta, and they probably have the stuff trimmed out running these times, they have it trimmed out for fuel wise and everything that they get soft tires, you get one shot at it, if somebody bobbles you up, you're, 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 you're SOL. So now, well, I just found it a little surprising. So now, here's a little bit of an interesting surprise for me. Uh, you guys know that uh, back from Ma from when we ran at Magni Core, Brian Mongrain was setting some hot laps. Here he is tonight, however, sitting back in 23, about five and a half seconds off the pace here at Daytona. Ah, surprising. Yeah, I would expect that. Yeah, I would expect that car to be faster. I don't know. I have to watch him. You know, who knows? You know, if he, you know, it might be he's just having a little trouble with the setup here or something. You know, it's some. You know, it can be difficult to get that car dialed in. I mean, a 1:41 is not a not unrespectable time in any way or may you know means. You know, it's just those guys no, up front you, uh, are just going so damn fast. And so close together, you know, I think you hit it on the nail head there, Thomas. I mean, you know, you can be, uh, you know, within a second or a second and a half of the leader and still be way down in the qualifying field in NAGP here. And that uh, really doesn't reflect on how you're going to finish in the race. I mean, look at that group. Look at that group. I mean, I mean, the whole field is, I mean, you got those two uh 38s up there that are just dominating right now oh aaron just popped in with a 39 flat basically up to third but you
look at the field and from Al and Knight all the way down to John and and uh, McIntyre in 19. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, a second. Constantly you know, amazes me how, how close they're, together they're the times as as they are. Can. Everybody has uh, uh, the level of competition is just great. So on board with your provisional pole sitter right now, we've got about a uh, little less than 10 minutes left in qualifying to go. Chris Moses uh, setting a blistering pace here tonight in that Ferrari 550. Well, he is a man on the mission, and he did win this race last time they were out in season 19 with Marty Uran in second and Rich Roman in third. So, uh, you know, Rich sitting in sixth, uh, Marty, as we talked about, carrying some weight, but, uh, you know, about two seconds off for, for Marty, but hour and a half, a lot of racing. Yep, absolutely it is, and... Um you know, Chris has been trying to uh, string together a really nice second half of the season here. So, and he's been doing it both in GT2 and in GT1. So, no surprise there that he'd uh, let it all hang out tonight and try and put himself on the pole, get a good hole shot, and we may be seeing him check out on some of these guys. Well, we definitely know he is in the hunt for the champ. Championship and uh, <laughs> we know he's able and more than capable of pulling that one off this season. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. You know, as as his teammate in GT2 and stuff, uh, Chris has definitely, you know, rekindled the fire of motivation. Well, not just you know, one after victory. that victory to just, you know, Three Thomas, he had uh, two in victories in one week, back, one in GT1 you know, on and one in GT2. And so it's showing now. Uh, definitely one of the top drivers here in the league and I uh, can't say enough about Chris all the work he's done for everybody here. Yeah, it definitely. You know, he I mean he does a lot for the league. I mean, with all the stats and all this other and the stuff he does you know so you know being motivated to put the time in behind the wheel to you know can be difficult sometimes and uh you know hats off to him for everything he does for the league and uh to see him running good you know as a bonus so uh big al's dropped down to p10 and dropped down and you know he's still running the 140s. Uh, got Goblet's having a good qualifying effort. He's sitting there in P11 right now. Yeah, that's good. You know, and Matt Taylor. Something that's always brought up about Greg is his, uh, he, you know, I mean, the guy's so smooth, and wherever he starts, he moves up. If he could only get himself to start up closer to the front, he has less moving up to do. You know, I mean, he's, his driving has proved that. So if we can just crack the whip on him and get him to get some uh, good qualifying in here, you know, he's definitely going to be, you know, Absolutely. up there and, and fighting for it. Yep, got to agree with that. Yeah, a little surprised I'm just going through the grid here, folks. 
Uh, Salem's down in uh, 29th. A little surprised on that one there, but uh, just want to throw out a big thanks for Salem for filling in last week and helping uh, Ken out with the broadcast. Thanks again, Salem. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I th- uh, thank him too because I had kind of <laughs> been <laughs> chalked into that position was like having some technical issues and, you know, he was more than gracious to step in there at the last minute and, you know, help Ken out because it is it's a lot to deal with for one person. Well, it's a lot more fun when there's a bunch of us up here. Yeah, true that, true that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on that team too. But, you know, it's like one of those things where I was in that, in that, I was in a different time spectrum or whatever, however you want to state it. It was just going to be impossible for me to, to chat with Ken and be, you know, understandable to the viewers. Well, I think tonight, guys, uh, I may end up uh, grabbing a few guys. I'm going to uh, pop out of our uh, event channel for a second here, and I'm going to go see if we can get some uh, guys for in race interviews. So I'll be back in a sec. Yep, that sounds fantastic, Jack. Thank you. In the meantime, we will go ahead and be on board with Brad Maris, who's currently sitting in P2, switching back to the leaderboard. 138.56 for Chris Moses, 138.81 for Brad Maris, and your top five all in the 38s. Yeah, it's crazy. I just want to mention also, we got Matt Taylor's just jumped up to to eighth with a 39.8. So he's definitely done his homework and came to play. Absolutely. Matt Taylor has been uh, just on fire lately, putting in good runs. You're not kidding. Yeah, good runs, good laps, and he's uh, been stringing together some really nice races for himself. So it's good to see Matt Taylor uh, up there in the top ten. Mixing it up with the uh, fast guys. Yeah, and it's deserved, you know, being, you know, hurt right now. And not, But I've raced, with, you know, with him door-to-door in GT2, and um, he's a great driver, you know, very predictable person to be around and a joy to race against because he doesn't, he doesn't take chances, you know, that risk, you know, both both you guys, you know, and just it's just enjoyable to race with people like that. Yep, it certainly is. So we're winding down qualifying, about 2 minutes and 45 seconds left of qualifying here at Daytona International Speedway. Uh, we are using the road course version of this great layout, and uh, these boys look to be having some fun out there, man. They just keep on getting faster and faster. Yeah, I'm still knocking on wood for some uh, some dry action to start off at least, you know. That will be key. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, cycling through the field here up to P14. It looks like that uh, 40 kilos is certainly affecting Marty Uren tonight. He's uh, sitting in P14 right now. And uh, his partner, his teammate, Mike Gratrix, in 20th. Well, guys, it's uh, it's all a go for some in-car interviews tonight. It seems like the entire field wants to get in on our show. Oh, good. The more, the merrier. Yeah, this should be a fun race. I mean, this, this, this is going to be exciting. Uh, I just... Yeah, your boy Matt has uh, moved up to eighth. He's really, he's really putting on a show tonight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be rooting for Matt too. You know, he's definitely like, like you guys said, he's been putting in the time and, and just it's showing with progressively better finishes every week. Yeah, you know, we knew he had some speed. You know, it was just putting it all together and keeping it together for the entire races. And uh, this season, both Monday and Thursday, it, it looks like it's all coming together for him. Uh, now we got 10 drivers in the 139. So, uh, man, those guys are hauling the mail tonight. Yeah, that they are. You've got your... Uh... Yeah, top five still in the 138s, and then up to 10th in the 139s. They're just getting faster as uh, Quali's uh, running. Uh, we're winding down qualifying with 30 seconds here left to go.
Well qualified. Ooh, just about John done Ludden there. just knocked uh, Maris off at the last second there. He, he did indeed. Uh, is Rich? Uh, is Rich? Uh, I don't know if Rich is going to be able to get this lap in. Going to be close. Going to be real close. You know, it's going to be a heartbreaker if he's uh, pulling in a great time. Yeah, he's on pace. Sorry, guys. I was having a little conversation here with my wife. But, uh, yep, we are. Oh, so the clock has stopped. Got a couple guys still trying to get a couple of uh, their last licks in, if you will. Yeah, not enough. Nope. We're done. That's it. Ah, We're so done. John Ludden was sneaking in that... Uh, Sneaking in that second spot on the front row, you know, right there at the wire. That was a nice lap. Well, you know, if there's one guy I wouldn't want to have a drag race with is Chris Moses. And John has uh, mentioned before he just has struggled to get that uh, Pagani uh, off the line as quick as some of these other drivers can. And we know Chris sure knows how to make it move straight out of the gate. Yeah. He certainly does. And I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, that can be scary, you know, being that guy. You know, I, I'm not the greatest off the starts either. And, you know, there's nothing worse of getting a little bit of a bobbled start and just getting engulfed by the field. It just is, you know, it just gets scary. So hopefully you can get that thing off clean and, and, uh, fall in line if he has to and get to work yeah you know um, we we've had a, a a couple of schmozzles this season and we've had a couple of actually pitcher perfect starts where the guys get lined up uh, and get out in an orderly fashion and boy it makes a big difference because on lap one you can go from like p5 to p25 in a blink of an eye yeah exactly so, Chris Moses sitting on the pole, eh? Well, Gup, I didn't even notice Gup up to eighth, too. Wow. Gup sneaking in one there at the end. Holy mackerel, I didn't catch that. Uh, you know, there's another guy who's got, like, uh, re-energized, as you said before. Uh, boy, he is, you know, focusing on GT1, and uh, he is turning in some really good efforts this season. Yeah, Gup, Gup's been around a long time, and, and he's, he knows how things work and stuff, and it, it seems like he's in that Audi, right? You know, he seems like this car really suits his his style, and um, it's good to see him up there in the top ten to start this race. Well, I think Gup is in that big Aston Martin. That's what I meant, Aston Martin, so. So, boys. Yeah, remember, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm in bed with a bad foot on pain <laughs> pills. So if I'm rambling, shit, <laughs> just go. That's on, okay, Tom. It's all good. That's okay. Kenny was intoxicated on uh, legal drugs once uh, other time this season. So we're all, we're all in good company <laughs> okay. here. Oh yeah, that was uh, what was that? I think that was for the Townsville race, wasn't it? It was one of those races, man. Just. Ooh, I think I finished last of the running cars. Hey, man, you know what? Finishing is, you know, my mentality has always been with racing. Finishing is priority one, you know. Once you get that down consistently, you can work on the other stuff. But if you're getting yourself frustrated and getting out early every race, you know, you're never going to, it's never going to equate to, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, just moving forward. Absolutely. And talking about moving forward, uh, I haven't heard any word, but for any of you guys out there, uh, Brad Maris, our uh, wonderful instructor, usually runs a race school in the off-season. I'm looking forward to it. I know, Mr. Schubeck, you've participated in them before. Uh, oh, I yeah, am I'll looking be forward there. to it's this year. 
you know, you'd be surprised, you know, when you get in a situation, you know, with the schools and stuff, and having somebody just taking the time to watch what you're doing, you know, I, I'll be the first to admit that, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I've developed some bad habits that. I, some I know I have and some I don't know, you know, and if if I can have somebody kind of crack the whip on me or smack me upside the head and you know, give me that stop doing that shit, you know, and, you know, get me to focus on trying to stop doing those things, you know, it's only going to help me. Well, you know, it, it amazes me, you know, Brad constantly amazes me at, you know, how quickly he can analyze what you're doing wrong and uh, boy you know it, uh, a couple of laps when he's riding around with you he can drag you back off to the side and he can see you know right away what you're doing wrong and what you need to uh, improve so any of you guys out there that want to take part in the driving school come on out it's a lot of fun uh, a lot of ideas are exchanged and uh, everybody learns something from somebody else at driving school so come on out in the off season and we're gonna make sure that Brad uh, holds his driving school again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna force him to have his driving school again. I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab a soda and get ready for this race. So we have about three and a half minutes left of warm up. Uh, Jack, any predictions for tonight? Well, you know, um, Chris is way out in front. And, and looks like, you know, he's got things dialed in. Ludden has put in some great times. But I'm going to go with my old instructor buddy, Brad Maris. I just think that that, that Viper is going to be hauling ass tonight. Excuse my French, folks. And I think oh he's going to Oh, my God, I got check. back just in time to hear that. Uh Oh, no, no, say it isn't oh, so. that means I got free reigns on the F-bombs <laughs> now. Let's bring it up. So, <laughs> I, I'm looking for, I'm looking for Brad, uh, the challenge for the lead tonight. Yeah, you know, I have to agree with that choice. Um, Brad's a great strategist out on track. Uh, and given the fact that this is a high speed, this is about as high speed as they come. Uh, in terms of the road courses that we run here at NAGP, uh, Brad certainly has an advantage. He, uh, the Viper, just seems to dominate here. And uh, but you can't count on Chris Moses either because uh, Chris did win here last last time they raced here, and uh, he's got that uh, Ferrari dialed in as well. So, you know, I'm going to say yeah. that within your top five, you have a winner for sure. Well, you right. know what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough to call. I mean, I, I, I'm going to put my money with, uh, wow, that's a, that's a tough one. You know, I really, I, I think Moses is hungry to, to, uh, to repeat here. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with Moses, but Rich has gotten rid of, shed all his weight and stuff. And he's shown that he has his car trimmed out too. So that top five is going to be insane. Yeah, and you know what? I don't call Chris Moses the pit wizard for no reason at all. And if anybody can pull some extra seconds out of this, of any track, it's Chris during pit time. I've There's nobody better here in the pits than Chris. Yeah, you know, pit wizards also. You got Aaron. Aaron Parsons, the pit wizard. Andres Prieco, he is uh, a pit wizard also. Um but you know all those all those top 10 guys you know got the pit stuff down to a science but there's there's time to be had there you know so it'd be interesting to see it is going to be a barn burner boy oh boy hang on to your helmets tonight yep i'd have to agree and um Talking about barn burner, let's talk about tire burners. The Saline SR7, Alex White. Um, you know, I, I know that you can set up these Salines with as little downforce as you as you can around here. But uh, again, the car is notorious for chewing up them rear tires. High bank turning, tons of downforce, all the pressure on the tires. I don't know. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, this this course is going to be hard on everybody's tires, I think, because of the banking and the high speeds of it. But like you said, you know, um, those guys in those uh, uh, Salines and, you know, maybe Aaron also in that uh, McLaren might be having a little bit of a rough time with the tires. But hopefully we'll have good temperatures for those guys and dry conditions and, and they can just go out there and flog it like they stole it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, we didn't mention uh, weather. Uh, boy, I am hoping for a dry track tonight, guys. Yeah, so am I as we watch Alex White take a huge tumble down the back sweep for turn seven. I mean, wet track at night would be uh, a wet nightmare. <laughs> That's to say the least, Jack. I wouldn't want to have to see these guys running at night in the wet. That's a... Uh... That's just crazy. So we're switching over to the race session, and we are back at night. Uh, why don't we go ahead and run this uh, starting order, starting with you, Jack, then Shubes, and I'll go. On the pole, the pit wizard Chris Moses in P2, John Ludden, P3, Brad Maris in fourth, Rich Roman, and in P5, the wonder from down under, Aaron Parsons. Six, Andres Preto, seventh, Alex White. Gup Douglas with a strong 8th, and Matt Taylor also with a strong ninth. David Poole 10th. Starting in P11, Mr. Juan Monroy. The boss, Al Merriman, will be starting in 12th. Jonathan Cuppet in P13. Marty Uren carrying around 40 kilograms of uh, ballast will be in P14. Ian Jolicor in 15th. In P16, John Sporto Sportelli, Mr. Smooth, Greg Myers in P17, Andre Cole in 18, John Waffen in 19, and Mikey Greatrix in 20. Uh, Johnny McIntyre, 21. Sergio Caldron, 22nd. Jared Keane, 23rd. Danielle Wilkerson, 24th. Sam Rolf, 25th. And starting in 26, Bjorn Heyman. Brian Mongrain starting way back in 27th. John Eve Sampson, 28th. Salem Montgomery Jr., 29th. And Paul Hall will start in 30th. And uh, let's see here. I guess, yeah, uh, your last starter here. Oh, I'm sorry. 31 for Lou Mascherelli and 32 for Kreshna Khalili. That is your starting order. Well, got to wish all these guys good luck, and hang on, boys. Kenny has the broadcast. That indeed, and boy, I got to tell you, these guys are starting pretty much dead even in the first row as we get ready to go green here. Chris Moses hoping for the whole shot, but I don't know that. Pagani's on the... And Chris Moses jumping out to an early lead, and John Ludden in second almost gave way to Andres Prado. Brad Maris jumps into P2. Well, we had a bit of a schmozzle at the back there, boys. Uh, a bunch of the guys got tangled up, so uh, not the cleanest of starts at the back. Uh, nope. Cones are being driven everywhere, and I know that we had an off. Oh, the boss, Al Merriman, pushed back to P30. Heavy damage uh, to the front of his car. Andres Pareto up to third. A nice start for him. Wow, Lou Mascherelli parks it in the garage. Well, Big Al got into that schmozzle. He is back in 30th. Uh, chasing down Sam Rolfe and Matt Taylor. And Sam Rolfe and Matt Taylor were swapping paint. So those guys are back in 30 and 31st. I'll tell you one thing that's interesting, though, is that Andres Prieto has uh, got a real good start and got up to th got up to uh, third. So that puts your two Vipers together. If they can get tucked in together and start working together, this could get real difficult on Chris. You got that right. You know, we talked about that in the early pre-show, and uh, <laughs> boy, they will work together. Those two. So Chris oh, Moses. Salem has lost it in the chicane. 
Looks like uh, Brad's closing on to make a move, it looks like, maybe. Chris is defending. Out at the back, we've already got a lot of problems out here. We got Krishna Khalili heading into the pits, and we got somebody else heading in too. Brian Mongrain is heading into the pits as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that had to do with the. Uh, wow, we got a with, bunch of them in the pits. Yeah, it had to do with the foray in the back. I don't. We didn't quite get everything on camera. We got some of it, but uh, being as dark as it is, hard to catch the clear pictures on the camera. Don't know exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get some talk about it later on. But uh, just absolutely, the yep. CC committee has got their work cut out back here. I'll tell yeah, you. they certainly do. I'm on board with your race leader right now, Chris Moses, putting a little bit of a gap between himself and Brad Maris, and Brad Maris also putting a gap between him and his partner, his uh, teammate Andres Prado. So uh, interesting how these guys are driving here tonight, eh? I would have thought for sure that the two Vipers would have uh, kind of teamed up to get some sort of a draft going. Yeah, you know, it's definitely an option they have, but, you know, it, being where Brad is right now, you don't want to let Chris get away. You want to just run as hard as you can. If Andres can catch up and push you, or you can push him either or, great, but you definitely don't want to let him get away. And he's staying close. That Viper power is, is chugging down that straight, ain't it? But that 550's got some balls, too, man. Hey, yeah, they both do. They both do. They're wicked top-end cars. Uh, a lot of power, too. It looks like Krejnik Khalili is out of the race with engine trouble. Looks like Ludden's going to start pressuring uh, Preto here. I think it's like he's got his car. Let's see. Yeah, he's definitely he's right there. So we've had a couple already, guys. Brian Mongrain, DNF, Lou Mascherelli out John Wathen running 20th and Dan Wilkerson driving the Panos in 21st is going to make an inside move on oh, Wathen Rich, Rich and Aaron, Aaron just passed Rich Rich and Aaron are having a really good race there in 5th they're in tight looks like Rich is coming back at him And there yeah, is Alex a gaggle right there. there. Five, six, seven. You you hit it, Thomas. Uh, Alex White is closing up on these two, but if these two pony up, they can put some distance be between them themselves and Alex White. Roman taking the high side of the draft. There he goes on the inside. Can he make it stick? Wow, he has that car trimmed out, man. That last little part of that straight, man, that that vet came alive, didn't it? That it did, and he puts the moves on Aaron Parsons to take over P5. We have got a real battle going on back here. Uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11. We got Sportelli, Douglas, Jolicker, and Juan Monroy nose to tail going through the uh, inside section of the course. Just jumped on board with you there, Jack. I'm uh, actually on with Ian Jolicor. And yeah, boy, oh boy, these guys are vying for position, fighting hard. And right behind them, this is a five-car battle. You've got uh, Monroy behind Jolicor, and right behind him is Marty Uren. So these guys are all tight in together. What a great race they're having. It's looking like a lot of fun out there. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, Chris has uh, gotten a, a one second gap on Brad, so everything's settled down here at the front. I'll keep an eye up here if you guys want to check out the field. Yeah, you know, the guys out back, they're uh, 
So they got their little battles going on, but you know what? Everybody is sort of settled down, and it uh, looks like they got over that first couple lap uh, excitement and are settling in for the long haul now. Yeah, on timing and scoring, it's looking like, uh, you, like you said, man, that uh, they're racing hard, tenth uh, through, you know, twelfth. Ian, Juan, and Monroe. Great battle, yeah, Marty. Great battle going on for P20. Matt Taylor putting the inside moves on Dan Wilkerson driving the panels. He's going to take over P20. Way to go, Matt. Well, he had some great early uh, qualifying speed, and we know he's got some pace. Uh, first lap, uh, Schmazel's got him caught up, so uh, he'll try and pick his way through this group and make him, himself up into the points. So eight hundredths of a se I'm sorry, eight tenths of a second uh, separate Brad Maris and Chris Moses as they head now into the bus stop chicane 8 9 10 11 turn complex it looks like the Vipers got some strong legs down that back stretch but uh, Moses keeping that pedal pegged all the way to the firewall yeah this is where that Viper's gonna show its grunt uh, I think it's he's closing up a little it's just like he just doesn't quite have enough to get him by the first turn it's down to four More. now, down to three. Yeah, he's close. Uh, yeah, you know, if he Just gets any closer, he's going to be in his back seat any minute now. But there's also a great battle <laughs> yeah. going on for, for five, six, and seven. Just staying up here uh, with your leader battle going on right now just to see if anything happens within the next lap or so. Looks like... Uh, yeah, it looks like Pareto and Luden are going to be get, uh, talking to each other here pretty quick. And, and Rich and Aaron. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like in a little, little pack. Yep. Yes, they are. But, uh, oh, Brad Maris. I'm, Brad Maris having to uh, check up. Not to run into the back of uh, Chris yeah. Moses. Yeah, it looks like Moses is... Uh, a little bit on the loose side there, and and gave some up. Be interesting to see if now he's he's got what was he uh, eight eight tenths? Uh, he's at four tenths here. If he'll have enough to get him by the first first turn, is he starting to take it now? Well, no doubt he's getting some pull from Chris Moses. Uh, Brad Maris all over his tail takes it a little wide coming out of the bus stop, but he's right back on it. And no doubt that the draft is he may paying, have enough to get him. Part. He may have enough to get him by the first turn. Let's see what, how Chris will defend. He's coming. Coming. He's coming like a freight train. Whoa. On the inside of Chris Moses. Moses not letting up, but Brad with the inside line. Going to have to see how this one plays out. Will Moses try the over-under? No, he is going to concede the spot. Yeah. Well, so, Whoa. so it looks like that eight tenths. It looks like eight tenths is what Moses needs to keep him off uh, the whole back straight, front straight. If he's any closer, that Viper power will get him. Well, it looks well. You know, you know, it, 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 typical. I mean, you miss. You, you get a little bit of slide on a corner, and it's so hard to collect it back up. You know, it looks like Brad is fighting to get back into his rhythm here, and just maybe sliding just a little too much on this infield course well we know that that the ferrari has a little bit more than the viper does on the infield no doubt as chris moses could just easily pull up on brad's bumper but we're probably going to see brad pull a little bit of a uh, of a gap going down these uh long sweepers and straights viper certainly stretching wow. its legs on its uh on the long on the long parts Already showing that on uh, on uh, my feed here, so uh, that Viper sure has a straight line speed. That it does, um, and it looks like uh, Brad may have set up his Viper with a little bit of push. We know that Chris Moses likes his cars loose. He loves the tail ends to fishtail a little bit more, a uh, bit of oversteer, if you will. 
So, uh, that's opposite of what Brad typically drives. Well, yeah, and that Viper's got that... an uh, inherent push. You guys should know that you drive one in GT2. Yeah, that's something that can be difficult to dial out. Uh, well, yeah. chasing down these guys is uh, P3 and P4. You know, we've got uh, Prado and Ludden. And, uh, if, oh, Prado, Ludden. Yeah, and this is like a five-way freight train going on here. But Ludden taps that inside wall. No doubt he'll have a little bit of aero damage now. <laughs> wow. And, you know, you've got right behind him. We've got uh, Parsons and White. Uh, but you're right. It, it It is literally a freight train. Yeah, that it is. Boy, these guys are uh, just hounding each other on the infield. You know, and as you mentioned, Thomas, if these guys would just settle down and just stay where they are and use each other for drafting, they could close the gap up. Yeah, it's so easy for us broadcasters to say that stuff. And you know, when you're behind the wheel, it's a whole different fact. But it is something that is going to play, I think, can play into some people's hands if they take advantage of it. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. said and done, right? Yeah, they, they, they all want to pass each other. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, sometimes these little battles cost you time. And, you know, it looks like Roman is, uh, you know, well, there he goes on the outside. He looks like he's going on the high side, going to try and uh, uh, pass Ludden. Uh, but if you just tuck in behind him, you know, it, it would push both of them forward. Oh, he's coming. Yep, uh, Roman on the outside line. Ooh. I tell you, that Corvette was just built for this track. But Ludden not conceding easily. He still holds Ooh. that inside line, side by side, as they go into the 2 3 turn complex. Oh, oh, oh boy. This is exciting. And look at Parsons. Wow, Parsons great. down on the inside Ooh, now, Parsons. looking for an opening. I almost had the opening there. That was great. That was a great Roman great driving by both putting, those guys. Yep, door putting door the inside. That whole first sector. Absolutely. Putting the inside move on John Ludden. Now John Ludden having to contend with Parsons, who tries to take a peek on the inside. And Alex White. Yeah, you got White there, too. <laughs> peek. Poor, poor old John. He, he's going to feel like he just got swallowed by Jonas the Whale. <laughs> But really, really smart. I'm just watching Aaron Parsons there. And, you know, on on this oval section, you know, Aaron is just deking down and pulling out to have a little peek. But, oh, there goes White down on the inside. Parsons says, me too. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. <laughs> Hang on, boys. Oh, wow. And to the bus stop they go. Hold your breath. Nearly Hold side your breath. by side. Woo. Wow, that is scary. But here's well, an Parsons pulls that one out of his hat. Yeah, here's a little bit. Here's an interesting. Here's an interesting thing that happened. So these boys were battling. They were freight training. They got into a positions battle. Allowed Andres Prado to pull away and and put himself about a second and a half gap over Rich Roman. Once he got past the the battle, he too started to put a gap between himself and the uh, last three cars. So still battles going on here. Parsons, John Ludden, Alex White. Yeah. This is crazy intense right. racing. You know from experience, though, that, that, that you're, you're, when you're door-to-door -door and, and racing hard, you know, you're giving up a little. And that was exactly what Rich wanted to get away from that group. And look, at he's pulled away a little bit, you know. Just that little bit of fighting makes such a big difference, you know, in your overall speed. Yeah, and we can see Parsons starting to put a little bit of gap on Ludden because Ludden's got uh, to Well, I got, I got Brad Maris maybe bit. had an issue... Uh, and Moses is back in the lead, and uh, Maris is back. So Mar Maris might have had a, a little off or something in the infield. Uh, yeah, definitely going to happen in the infield if it's going to happen with uh, Brad and that Viper. So, Salem Montgomery in 24. He is driving blind. No headlights on the car. Might have gotten uh, that taken taken out uh, in that foray early on lap one. Andres Cole, 23. 
Also, same issue, no headlights. Gianni Sampson in 22. Now, I was uh, starting to... Oh, Matt Taylor, P18, make that P19, has an off right before... Uh, right before turn 12. So, Matt Taylor... Yeah, no. come on, Matt. Come on, boy. S settle down. Just start working them. Yeah, yeah, he had Matt, pace. That's, he a, can, he, that's he can, a tough thing he, to deal with. So I was just uh, observing a bit of a yeah, battle. in there, though. You know, you see you have a good start, and then, then you get caught in one of those schmozzles. You know, it's tough. Yep, that indeed. A uh, good battle going on for P16 between Sergio Calderon and Jonathan Cuppet right now. They are going through the, uh, the back straight. Good battle going on there. I'm sorry, front straight. Good battle going on there. And uh, Gub Douglas. I'll tell you who's uh, uh, Rich is really on the move. He's almost caught, Frank. I'll keep you updated. Sorry, Ken. No, That's no, no. Okay. That's, As he's you coming. Ken. Yep. Douglas and Marty, you're in or duking it out. They are. Uh, looks like they're matching pace. Yeah, uh, earlier uh, Doug Douglas, Gup Douglas was just all over Marty Uren's bumper. So he spaced himself out from Marty Uren now, but nonetheless, a great battle going on for P10. Well, I'd be looking for that big ass Mark because we know Marty's carrying some weight. So that big ass to Martin might have a little bit of an advantage on the oval. Yeah, and, and also Mar Marty, Marty's a difficult, he can be a difficult pass. So um, that's a, that might be a good call on, on Gup is just. Uh, you know, tuck in there and and uh, go for the long haul. Again, you know, uh, can they work together to try and move forward? I doubt it, but it would be nice to see. Ludden and White having a fierce battle. John Ludden has been pushed back now to P7. Alex White directly in front of him as Ludden takes a look on the outside but can't make it stick going into turn one. So Alex White ultimately finding his way around Ludden as well. Moving up the field now. Aaron Parsons in P5. Rich Roman in P4. Prado in yeah. 3. And uh, yep, Brad Maris and then Chris Moses is your leader. Well, I'm back here taking a look at uh, Al Merriman, who uh, looks like he has got some d damage on that car of his. So... Uh, that's not going to help him. He's sitting back in P19, and we know he had better pace than that. So he got caught up in the first lap as well. So uh, hang in there, Al. A lot of racing left. Yeah, that he did. He got pushed back to P30 early on, and I believe it was right there in turn one. Something happened, and uh, we won't know what, what it was until the replay. We've got Bjorn Heyman stuck. Oh, back it up. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Almost collected the leaders there. had that Conaseg sideways in turn one. Oh, I miss that. I'm glad yeah. I missed it. I just want to say, Alex in six is looking is looking pretty good, you know. In that saline, that tire-eating machine with 40 kilos, you know, to be running in six is, he should be happy with that, I feel. Oh, no, Alex will never be happy with sixth. <laughs> yeah, true, but you know, I, I'm just telling you, Alex, you're doing good, man. Just, just given keep, keep looking forward and moving forward. Given the circumstances and the fact that he is carrying weight, he's doing phenomenally. Another person, you know, has quietly been sneaking up as Sportelli is up to eighth now. Um, Granted, that whole group from eight down is, you know, back a little ways. Still, he's been slowly working his way up. Marty Uren, P10, still battling it out with Gup Douglas. Gup just not letting Marty get too far away. And uh, Mr. Smooth, Greg Myers in P12, is slowly closing the gap to these two. It's going to be interesting what goes on within the next three or four laps here, gentlemen. Well, you know, I'm just looking at the uh, lap times here, guys. And Chris Moses is definitely putting in faster, consistent laps. Brad Maris is putting in a 143.85 on his last lap. Uh, about uh, two-tenths of a second 
faster than uh, Chris. So, you know, if they stay the way they're going here with their laps, I'm going to keep an eye on these lap times to see how uh, how consistent they can keep it or see when they're dropping. But we've got 44 laps, and we're cons on running lap 13 right now. So we still they got a long way to go before pit. Mike Grachix with a really good run tonight. He's running in P13. Little damage on the front of that Ferrari F40 on the left side, but very respectable nonetheless. Keep it going, Mikey. You are doing absolutely fantastic. And Greg... You know, Rich has really closed up on Andres, and uh, they're having a good race in the infield. It just doesn't seem like Rich quite has to... To grunt to get him on that back straight, so it'd be an interesting little battle they got going. There. Race is scheduled for 44 laps, so there is still tons of racing to be had. Currently working lap 13. Yeah, your top six drivers are running in the 140s, and everybody else is lapping in 141 or better. So the last points paying position, P16, Sergio Calderon, has had Mr. Jonathan Cuppet all over his tail from the green flag. And Jonathan Cuppet, poor guy, has been trying his best to try and get away or get around Sergio, but Sergio is just making that Ferrari very wide for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's all part of it, you know. Just buckle down, Jonathan. The window will be there and you'll get it. Salem Montgomery getting around Bjorn Heyman for P twenty two now. Paul Hall running in twenty fourth. John Eve Sampson in twenty fifth. That is the last of your running order. Well, we've got up in P4, we got Roman all over Prado's tailpipe. And uh, not going to surprise me if I, we see Andre uh, uh, Prado uh, come under the guns of Rich Roman and Rich take advantage in uh, this lap. Yep, just jumped on board with Rich Roman as you started to state that, Jack. But uh, yeah, looks like Andre's trying to keep his car out front with a little bit of a push in that Viper and Rich Roman able to capitalize and pull right up on his bumper a little bit. But boy, you can see the power of that Viper. I mean, even though Rich gets right up on him, uh, boy, as soon as he hit the Andre hits the apex and can get on the throttle, boy, he sure pulls away pretty, pretty smartly. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, just moving a little bit further Quick back. Quick update. Go ahead. Jonathan did get him there. Jonathan did get Sergio there. Oh, we moved away. <laughs> Good job, John. So That's Jonathan, yeah, yeah, Jonathan Cuppet up to P15. Good on you, Jonathan Cuppet. Running in the points. That's the way you do it, gentlemen. That battle is definitely not over. <laughs> Sergio is definitely <laughs> wanting that wanting that spot back. Oh, yeah. It's the difference between one and two points. And if he can get higher, better still. But you know what? Jonathan Cuppet showing some great pace here tonight, running in P15, having just taken one spot away from Sergio Calderon. And, hey, you know what? Mon Juan Monroy in P17. Don't count him out, Juan Monroy. While his car may be a little banged up, he's running a great race here tonight. Yeah, he's, he looks like he's having, I think he just brushed the wall again. His car is definitely, you know, the damage he has is really hurting him on these on the banking, you know. So Gup so, Douglas. Oh yeah, he's dragging. Gup able to get around Marty Uren for P11 and now Gup has got his sights set on, uh, oh I'm sorry, no, Marty Uren's still in 10th. I was uh, looking at Gregory Myers, so that's my mistake, folks. But uh, Gup Douglas still on in the hunt for uh, P10, which is uh, Marty Urin. Yeah, you know, yeah, you were mentioning Thomas. 
You, you were mentioned, Thomas, Jack, about uh, some of that damage hurting these guys. You know, I can see that. I was just uh, cycling through the guys from, like, uh, P-16 all the way back. They're all suffering from aero damage, and that's going to hurt them big time in this track. Uh, probably why uh, Al Merriman's having trouble back here. Matt Taylor's car, it looks like it's been through the uh, crusher at the auto wreckers here in town. <laughs> Oh, uh, Andre, Cole, Andre Cole just uh, spun his Corvette again. Um, boy, hard to even tell that's a Corvette. Looks like something out at the King of the Hill race at the local track on a Saturday evening. So Andre's Prado running up on some lap traffic, giving some of uh, a bit of an advantage to Rich Roman to pull right up on him. So it looks like uh, we're going to have a race forming here for P3. Rich Roman just uh, pushing and forging that Corvette C6R ahead. But boy, like you said, Jack, man, that Viper coming out of the Apex can just get on the power and pull away. Yeah, and Rich, you know, that 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 can be really frustrating when, uh, you know, it takes you a whole lap to get in position just to watch the guy in front of you drive away from you <laughs> uh, on, a, on a non-technical part of the track. Yeah. It just, sometimes it drives me crazy. Yeah, it looks like Rich's car is, is a little loose out, whereas Andre's is really getting the power down nice out of those corners. If you watch Rich, it looks like he's kind of having to feather the throttle a little bit you know apex out so might be why he's just having such a difficult time getting up on his bumper to try and make a move mm. he is pushing hard though he is Going boy he, it is it's a, he, he this cut is a great that race for p3 he cut the exit of that uh bus stop chicane real close well, I don't think it was close at all. I was uh, uh, in the wingman view on Rich Roman. I don't think it was close at all, Ken. Um, he completely cut that corner. <laughs> well, we were in television spot view, so it was a little difficult to tell with the uh, nighttime uh, with the nighttime view. But uh, yeah, that was uh, no no surprise there that he cut it. Well, you know, for these guys up front. And I can tell you right now, it was a heartbreaker last Monday having uh, getting a, a cut penalty and having to do a drive-through. If these guys, oh, uh, geez, Prado taking that way wide. But if these guys go into the review after the race and get put down, they will not be happy. No, no, not at all. As they uh, come by one of the Salines, looks like that's a Salem's car, Salem graciously moves over for these uh, gentlemen coming by, P3 and 4. Yeah, yeah and he did a great job letting them guys, through. Letting those guys by. Yeah, I agree with you, Thomas. That was uh, very well done, and that's almost textbook there. Yeah, Salem's just got to keep his head down and, and keep that car going until he makes his pit window. So these guys in the back that are all banged up and you know, have, have no pace on this, on this, on these straightaways. You know, they need to just get their heads down, get into their pit window, and get that, get that crap fixed as as quick as they can. You know, and still make it a one stop. Yeah, you know? I was gonna say that. You know, it may be beneficial to these guys when they do make their pit rotations to go ahead and get that aero damage fixed. This is one track where you know what you want your oh, car. Oh, you got to a track. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's all oh, high speed here. Rich on the outside with... Oh, this is going to get ugly. Oh, God. Oh, somebody Ooh. spins. Not sure who that was. Oh, oh, they were just stuck between two guys. Two feral dogs there. He, <laughs> whoever that was was surrounded. Oh. Well, back out front, guys. We've got uh, uh, Brad Maris. Yeah, Brad Maris is closing the gap here. He's uh, 1.6, 1.7 seconds behind of Chris Moses. So he's cut that down by about four tenths of a second. So it looks like uh, Brad Maris's times up against Chris Moses. Chris put in a real hot lap the last time around just to maintain it. But it looks like Brad might have just a slight you know advantage on pace right now uh, and maybe it will close this gap within the next couple of laps 
Yeah, we saw that. It looked like it, what, what? What was it? Uh, it was like eight tenths. Um, when they pull out onto that back straight, if uh, Maris is within eight tenths of them, Moses is in trouble because that viper just gets up and goes. So I think that Rich Roman trying every which way to till sundown to try and get around Andres Prado, still unable to do it, but not letting Prado get too far ahead. And uh, back in P5, guys, Aaron Parsons has been slowly but steadily closing the gap to P3 and 4. Yeah, those guys are, you know, they're battling, so, you know, they're giving Aaron... And a little teeny bit every lap that they battle away like that. This is going to be a three-car battle shortly. Well, it's it, it may end up being a, a, a three-car battle, but you know what? Uh, Rich and Andre are getting so close together. I hope this doesn't end poorly. Yeah, they're both professionals. They're just, uh, I think that you can definitely see uh, Rich's car is real good at entry, but he's he's loose out, whereas, you know, Andres is bad on entry, but good, good apex out, you know, so they're both battling conditions, you know, and, and trying to take advantage of their car as best they can, but that Viper power on the straights is really just giving Rich a a battle you know you know this is a great testament you know i gotta i gotta throw out a little kudo here i know we've already uh, thrown out some kudos to chris but he puts together probably one of the best balanced car packs for this nhg gp crew that i've ever seen yep you are not kidding oh yes whoa 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 we have got uh andre Prado into the pits It must be within his window because he yep. definitely was everything looks smooth so he's on he's probably on his game plan be interested to see if uh brad's on a different plan you know the two viper can't the viper camp split up their plans or or what Paul, well if nothing else this will get rich roman off his tailpipe paul hall unfortunately out with a suspension problem bjorn Haim in two laps down well, we are working lap 20, so uh, I, w I, I gotta say that they're probably within their pit windows. It's uh, scheduled to go 44 laps. Uh, what's the gap on, what's the gap on Merritt? 1.2 seconds. 1.2. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's not close enough. It was about 0.8 that he has to be, but he should be getting that down. Wow. Those two are battling good, even though that one second because that you know closes up by the end of the front straight then the Ferrari is a little better on the infield so it's great great dynamic up there between those two front runners I uh, one mistake well, Brad, by either is just gonna be just yeah Brad Maris's last lap was a 148.63 and Chris Moses was a 141.178 so Brad Maris definitely has pace here Gup Douglas finally getting around Marty Uren for P8. Took a wow, a great battle oh, that went on up. there. Yeah, great battle, but he finally got it done. And it looks like we have a battle that's about to start forming up for P10. Gregory Myers being hounded right now by Mike Gratrix. Going to be interesting to see how this plays out, considering that most of these guys are within their pit window uh, time frame right now. Yeah, Rich and Aaron in the pits. Well, you know, poor old Mikey, he just got some uh, arrow damage there, so that's not helping him out. And we can expect Gregory Myers to go long. He usually likes to go deep into the race before he takes his pit. I think that's a probably a good call on Rich's part because uh, he's battling so hard with uh, uh, Andres Prieto getting Andres Prieto back out there on fresh rubber and him staying out. So I think he may have changed his game plan a little, maybe pulled in, knowing that 
the guy who's really running tight with is uh, going to be out on fresh rubber, and he needs to get it as soon as possible. Now, if this GT1, uh, you know, Viper's anything like our GT2, you know, it, it, it's pretty good on fuel. Uh, we going to see any of these other guys who are coming in maybe a lap or two early? Uh, I, I hope they got their fuel calcs done because we've seen lots of guys run out this season. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that the vet is comparable. It's not, I don't think it's as good as the Viper, but it's, it's close. It'd be interesting. Both Chris and Brad into the pits. Yep, your leaders into the pits. Uh, John Ludden looks like he's going to dip in as well. And he's uh, followed by Alex White. So all of your, looks like your top four, top five are coming into the pits right now. Uh, it, looks, it looks like uh, Preto played Pit Wizard on, uh, on that pit because he definitely gained some time on Rich. So be interesting for Rich got to get his head down and, and go after him again. Not much, but still he gained, you know, a second is a second, you know. Gup Douglas temporarily inheriting the lead. Oh, that's a good feeling, ain't it? Even if it's short-lived. Take it, Gup. Take it. <laughs> take it. That's <laughs> give, right. Give us a give us a light flash at the checker flag, too. <laughs> or the checker line, you know? Yeah, he's had a great race. You know, he's kept his car clean. And then he's just running hard, so good on Gup. Gentlemen, I will be right back in 30 seconds. Greg Myers, Broadcast TV here. How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Uh, you're looking pretty smooth out there. How's conditions for you? Um, it's been a pretty boring race, but uh, managed to keep sight of the people in front of me, so I guess that's what counts. Atta boy, keep at yeah, it. Good. We're pulling for you up here. Yeah, Greg, right, good race. Good get that head down and get him. You all, you all have fun up there. Are you two out on track. And that was Mr. Smooth, Greg Myers. So, interesting here, uh, when we get this pit rotation, hard to see who's where and what's what until they all finish up here. Yeah, got Wilkerson's up there, he needs to pit still. He's having a good race, you know, in that. Panos, it's a and that car's lacking a little power for this place, so he's he's doing good. He's keep his head down and, and try and push forward. All right, boys, we're back. It definitely looked like uh, Moses did give some up in the uh, pit, you know, probably fuel, you know that that. Uh, that 550 is a, a lot thirstier than that Viper. Absolutely. In the tune of what? Brett, four seconds almost. Four seconds. I was just going to say, Thomas, he gave up four seconds in that pit rotation. And, you know, Chris couldn't have done it any quicker if he tried because uh, the, I, I still don't think there's anybody quicker in the pit, pit lane than Chris. So Brad Maris, who did pit, is back out in second. Gub Douglas still not giving up that lead. Must feel too good to gut. Enjoy it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, you, you get out there, you enjoy it as long as you can. And Chris Moses comes out in P3. Followed closely by Andres Preto. And watching Guffs, I mean, he his car looks like, like it's nice and underneath him, you know? So just keep running it. If it's the car's feeling good, run it. You know, uh, and you're right, Thomas, because he has been consistently in 142s from the start of the race all the way through. His lap times are not dropping off, so uh, not a real bad move on Gup's part to uh, hang out there if the tires and fuel will do it. Um, could we be looking at a double stint here for him? Consider double st <laughs> yeah, he took the words right out of my mind there, <laughs> Jack. You know, it's like it may, be, it may be something for him to chance, you know. He could gain well, a you know, like, big, big, big lot on Marty and and maybe up to Sportelli too. 
Uh, yeah, you know, it could be a, a big gain for him. Uh, you know, we obviously don't know what the tire wear is, but uh, if he can main, maintain these times, uh, he'll pick up a few spots, no doubt. So uh, we'll have to keep our eye on Gup Douglas. Well, it's definitely obvious that Gup did his homework because you can just tell by just watching his car. It's really, it's nice and underneath him and, and, and doing what he wants it to do. So it's an enjoyable drive, enjoy, you know, enjoy it. Boy, but back out in front, you know, that Brad has uh, got quite a substantial lead. Uh, you know, with the, we know the pace between Brad and uh, Chris was, you know, within hundreds of a second uh and uh boy brad's got to be uh, pretty chumped right now if he can just uh keep it air free um he might just take this one home yeah he's definitely you know definitely looking good right now it looks like chris is 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 nibbling at it a little bit but you know like you said you know he's Chris is having to push harder, you know, and you're pushing hard. That's when the little mistakes come, so. Gup coming into the pits. He's finally relinquishing. Well, as if, as if Chris didn't have enough of the Vipers in the first stint, uh, not far behind him is Andre Prado in another Viper. So Brad, as he crosses the start-finish line, inherits the lead again. Uh, Chris Moss is not too far behind, and like you said, Jack, <laughs> he, all he's got to do is look yeah. up into his rear-view mirror, and he's got the uh, mean-looking headlights of the Viper of Andres Preto right there. Uh, you know, I'm just looking at the uh, leaderboard here, guys. I'm a little surprised I uh, watched Craig Myers uh, drop down. He's now down in P20. Yeah, after the pit rotations, not sure what happened there. Uh, if he may have fumbled his uh, pit stop, but... I wonder if he had an issue that we missed. He, he may have indeed, because uh, he Almost was running has. a lot higher than that, yeah. Yeah, which is very uncharacteristic for, for Mr. Myers. Gup is rolling. And he might just make it out in front of Marty. Ah, it looks like uh, Marty's going to get around him on this one. But again... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, a little bit of a drag race. They're going to come out and almost neck and neck again. Oh, uh, yep. so this, is gonna, this battle's going to continue on. This is going to continue from the first stint uh, before Marty Uren had been uh, the first to pit of these two, so looks like we're going to pick up right where we left off before the pit started. Mike Gratrix. Boy, just over at the, uh, at the timing board here, guys. Andre Prado and Chris Moses are matching lap time. Good battle going on for P14 between Johnny Mac McIntyre and uh, Juan Monroy. They are nose to tail. <laughs> and Jonathan Cup at running P16, not too far behind. So, nice little three way battle going on there. Uh, the boss makes and his way also back closing up. Closing in on Mike Gratrix. Yes, they are. The boss making his way back up to P17. He's uh, being hounded by P18 Sergio Calderon, so uh, two Ferraris duking it out here as they come out of the bus stop chicanes. Andres Cole, P21. Salem Montgomery, P22. He's got his headlights back. Bjorn Heyman, 23. Jean-Yves Sampson in 24th, and uh, that's your running order. 24 cars and of the 24 uh currently 19 on the lead lap well so far it has been uh, great racing it looks like uh, brad is uh, fairly comfortable out there 
But, you know, he uh, all these drivers here up the front are now got to contend with some lap traffic. But, you know, the track is so big, so wide. Uh, lots of opportunity to let these guys through on a, a safe and incident-free manner. Yeah, what's great about this track, Jack and uh, Shubes, is the fact that you can actually let the leaders by. If you're not running on that pace, you, th there's enough room to let them by without losing uh, much time. Uh, perhaps a tenth, if that. Take a little bit of a wider line and, and just also, stay in it. Right, yeah. You know, take a little wide line and stay in the gas a little bit and maybe try and grab on and get a little pull you know and pull you closer to your next victim you know so it's it's a nice track for that where you can get the guys that are real fast by easy and maybe make it to your advantage as well as theirs whereas you can tuck in behind and and draft on them and push them a little bit and they can pull you along yep absolutely. And, and vice versa as these guys are coming up the lap traffic you know same thing i mean they can tuck in behind them get a pull and almost like a slingshot going by Yeah, it's definitely a track that there is no reason or excuse for any kind of holdup of any sorts. There's very few places, maybe the chicane, where you know it could get a little sketchy to try and overtake someone there. But all in all, the whole track is is so is wide. You know, you know, getting getting by lap traffic shouldn't be an issue. Now I'm just cycling through, and a lot of these guys who are lapping, uh, I don't see any problems out there at all. I know uh, during the season we get the odd, you know, uh, controversy over, oh, geez, I was held up by lap traffic, but it all looks good out there tonight. Yeah, but that controversy is, you know, horse shit in my mind, you know. It's, you know, it's like there, there are places, there are tracks we race where it's, it's difficult to pass and you know they have just as much right to be out there as anybody else so you know as as the pass er uh you got to make it happen on the pass either you know or uh, get him in trouble with, with blue flags you know you, I, can, I, you I, can press on him hard enough that he gets enough blue flags that they'll call him in you know but you know there are places where it's just there are tracks that are just very difficult and the opportunities are far and few between yeah, and you know, it is pretty much equals itself out for everybody. I mean, everybody's got the same concerns and the same passing here. I'm just taking a look. Uh, Aaron Person's car here, uh, he has got to be suffering here. He's sitting in P7, but uh, the front end of his car looks like a, a snow catcher or a snow plow I see out in the roads here in Canada. Not something I'd expect to see out <laughs> in the track at Daytona. Oh, that's got to that's be... That's got to be a heartbreaker for him, knowing that he's going to have to, you know, finish out this last, you know, this last part of the race with some damage, you know, because you know it's hurting your pace. So the boss, Al Merriman, makes his way back up into the points. He's currently in uh, 16th um, after the repairs in his pit stop, and this is what we were talking about. We alluded to this earlier. Uh, better to get the repairs done on a track like this because you have that whole second stint to drive as hard as you can and perhaps error free because you do have some gaps between you and those that are racing around you. Gives you an opportunity to just focus like you guys said, put your head down and forge ahead. Uh, looks like it's paying off for Al. He's uh, Like I said, he's running in 16th right now. Well, you know, I was just uh, something, guys, I just wanted to bring up. I was just checking on the uh, timing uh, board here. Um, Chris Moses and uh, uh, Brad Maris, their pit laps are almost identical. So I don't know where Chris lost the time. He must have had, a, he must have had an issue, you know, whether Ben just coming out of the pits with some lap traffic or maybe he just had an, you know, all of us have our little mistakes, but they're so costly at a fast track like this. Yeah, that is absolutely right. You did Daytona. You got to be on your A game to race here and be competitive. Uh, Jonathan Cuppet, though. Look at Jonathan Cuppet's working uh, Mikey here at the start line. Looking like he's going to move up to 13. Yes, he's got him at the line. Can we go see how they go into turn one? 
Yep, and I just joined you with this battle that's going on. And uh, John McIntyre looking to get in on this action as well in P15. Going to see have to going to have to see how this plays out. But Jonathan Cuppet with a clean pass. Oh, oh he loses it. Oh, whoa! Nice, 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 John. Nice, Jonathan. Nice way to keep that thing from getting in the line. <laughs> boy, oh boy! <laughs> that was a good recovery, man. That was could have been disastrous. So now him, we've got Great Tricks, and looks like. Whoa. McIntyre. John McIntyre taking it on the outside. Boy, there is some great racing going on here tonight. Yeah, this little this little group here, man, they're getting it on. It's good, fun racing. Let's kudos to John pulling that off, Cup, but that was a great recovery. It's to keep it, that it, out it of the race was, line. It was. I mean he 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 made a good pass. Um, he made a good pass and uh, lost it afterwards. Kept it, kept it out of the race line, like you said, Shubes. And boy, I, he's probably back there thinking, you know, I gotta go through this whole thing again. But uh, those are the breaks. Sometimes you get excited, you get excited and tend yeah, to overdrive the car a little bit. Yep. He overcooked well, a little it bit in of there, a but you know, pucker moment. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a pucker moment. Oh, that's that's both a pucker and a heartbreak at the same time, man. You're all messed up after that. So it is a great battle. Uh, Juan Monroy just put it off the uh, uh, off the wall there. He's in twelfth, followed by McIntyre trying to close that up. And <laughs> McIntyre's got great tricks all over him and cup it again. Yeah. So this is a great four-way battle going on here, and it just goes to show you, you know, the battle's not always for P1. Absolutely, you're right. Exactly. Yeah, and it's perfect. You know, Jonathan had that mistake. You know, it looks like he did the right thing. He calmed down, backed out a little bit, let the tires cool back down, get back on it. You got these two guys up ahead that are battling, so let them just reel, reel themselves back to you again and start all over. And, you know, in behind them is uh, uh, Al, and Al Merriman is sitting there going, fight, 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 because oh, he's yeah. in P16 right now, and he's thinking, oh, another one of these. But, you know, uh, we've got, looks like some lap traffic going by Al. That's probably your race leader. Here we've dropped a couple uh, of folks. Just check. Johnny I'm Sampson just and in. DNF. Ah, too bad. I'm checking in on Gup here. Gup and Gup and Marty really have a. Uh, I mean, there's no not. Gups and Marty have like real consistent. Like their pace is like almost. I don't know. Check their lap times, but they are just that gap is just there and staying. You know. So any bobble from Marty and I think Gup's gonna be ready to pounce. Yep, I have to agree. They've kept it consistent. The gap has stayed consistent over the last uh, three to five laps. So, good racing between Gup and Marty. Yeah, great racing. Yeah, every time I've checked in with them, they're always, you know, that gap, you know. Oh, Joel LaCour. Well, uh, Sorry, go ahead. Gup, Gup just put in his uh, two laps to go put in his fast lap of the race in the 141s. But he nice. is... You know, Mr. Consistent out there tonight in the 142s. I mean, just what we learn at school. Keep it consistent, and you will move forward. And Gup is uh, showing that in spades tonight. Yeah, and Marty might be fit. My, Marty, with that weight, you know, I think if Gup plays it smart, I think Marty's going to have some, maybe some tire issues towards the end here. And, you know, as long as Gup keeps it smooth, I think he can just, he's going to be able to pounce on him. Now, hey guys, I don't want to. Uh, Chris Moses, Chris Moses is gone off the timing board. Chris Moses is off the timing board. Oh, yes, he is. So that gives Andres Preto. Three of us, three of us guys, three of us have missed that. The biggest news of the night. Ugh. Oh, that's a heartbreaker too. He had a good. We're all here. fired. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, in our defense, you, you got to go where you know the, the viewers want to. The viewers want to see the racing. So, uh, Rich 
definitely pushing now. Yep, I right. can't believe that. You know what? I'm going to try and grab that guy. Yeah, it's very yeah, uncharacteristic him. for him to lose a connection. So Rich Roman, P3 right now, and uh, John Ludden holding fourth, Alex White fifth. So everybody moves up. Everybody behind Chris Moses moves up a spot from P2 on down. Yeah. It spread out pretty decently, you know, in the, in the Chris top Moses, 10. Chris Moses, broadcast racing, what happened? Oh, I dropped. Oh, oh no. Uh, we just saw you disappear off the timing board, and we didn't know what happened, and uh, we were blaming ourselves for missing the action. Uh, connection drop? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's too bad, Chris. You had a great car. Yeah, suck. It does indeed. Uh... Oh, well, sorry about that, Chris. We were real sorry to hear that you had a super race going there, and it looked like uh, uh, you and Brad were going to duke it out right to the end. Yeah. Yeah, it, stuff happens, you know. The temperature was affecting my car because it's a lot heavier quite a bit, so lost some pace. I got hotter. All right, Chris, we'll uh, put you down uh, back into your uh, team channel. Thanks, Chris Moses, folks. So, Mike Greatrix again with uh, Jonathan Cuppet looking on the outside as they come down the front straightaway. Jonathan Cuppet's uh, Corvette just stretching its legs, but this time I think Mike Greatrix may have a bit of an answer. They are side by side into turn one. Bo oh, Jonathan Cuppet with a huge cut. Yeah, in his defense, he's playing it safe. He had he had, he knew Mike was right on his door, and yeah, he's he's driving smart. You know, better to take a little grass than take take some pain off someone's door. Uh, and folks, we're yeah, not. He remembers. He remembers two laps ago when he almost lost it. So, he probably doesn't want to go there again. And just to clarify what Shu said, we're not promoting the funny smelling grass. We're talking about the grass out on the racetrack. <laughs> ah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Really? <laughs> except, except some of these guys I think might be on the funny grass the way they're driving. <laughs> no, oh no, that was that was uh, I think that was a good call on Jonathan's part to just take the safe take the safe route yep. there and you know they're, and they're still at it. Though. They are still at it tooth and nail this is a great battle going on mikey greatrix whoa, whoa. oh whoa, 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 whoa. mikey's lost it mike greatrix loses it coming out of the bus stop chicane Ooh. one of the one of the leaders Catching going by speed mikey Ooh, I, can, I cannot believe he spun that in a in a 360 and he's back on the gas well, you know, it it was gonna it was gonna end up bad for one of them. Mike Gratrix did come into the bus stop very shallow, trying to defend that line. That's just too high a speed to be able to do that. You kind of got to either uh, concede the position and take the outside inside line, but you can't come in shallow. So it's gonna have to get back on it and try and get uh, catch up to Jonathan Cuppet, who's built up a fairly decent lead at this point. Yeah, you know, and, and good on John, you know, he, he pressured him into that mistake, you know, that's part of racing, you know, you put enough pressure on somebody, sometimes they crack, and I think that's what happened there. Mike, just got to put his head down and go, go back and return the favor. Yep, that's it, that's it, and, uh, you know, yeah, like you said, put your head down, uh, don't worry about who's behind you, who happens to be Al Merriman. And Al is just forging ahead as quickly as he can. But we're just getting a whole bunch of drops tonight here, guys. Now, we've got... I just uh, picked up... Uh, we got Salem uh, back into the pits. He's just on his way back out now. Don't know what's going on there, but uh, uh, that definitely cannot be a scheduled uh, lap there. So we uh, missed him. He must have collected a bit of damage there. Yeah, we know that... Uh, Go ahead, uh, Shub, sorry. Uh, it's Salem's racing uh, from out of town, too, so, he, you know, he's just, I think this one he's just trying to finish out and 
Hey, you know, put it put it behind him. He's having a rough a rough night tonight outside. Yeah, and he's been putting t he's been putting in tons of schoolwork. So uh, you know, like a gentleman racer, he's he's got to split his time between real world and racing world. Oh, sail him hard into the wall, and I think that might do it for him tonight. Yeah, his car is yep. he's done. done. He's done. So I'll just uh, jump out front. Loaded in the truck. <laughs> yeah. Brad Maris, Andres Prado, Anger Racing 1 and 2. Looking to score some really good points here tonight. Help their championship endeavor. Salem Montgomery, Broadcast Racing. What happened out there tonight? Uh, doesn't look like he's got a mic there, Jack. Uh, I think he's he's racing from uh, from a remote location tonight. So I think he's just he's just one of those one of those races just got put behind you. It was a rough one for him, I think. Well, we're pulling for you, Salem. I know you'll be back and putting in another good effort next week. And thanks for sitting in on the broadcast for me there, Salem. It's much appreciated. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. Moi OC. So, eighth, uh, P8, Marty Uren. Still being followed by Gup Douglas. Gup Douglas away back. Something must have happened to Gup. He's lost his, uh, his front illumination headlights, lights. Yeah. yeah, he lost his headlights. Uh, John McIntyre in 10th and Cup at 11th. Graytrix, 12th. Al Merriman in 13th, not too far behind Mike Greatrix, and I believe yeah. that he may have an opportunity to catch him if he keeps it clean. Currently working lap 37 out of 44. Yeah, uh, Gup's last lap was a 53, so he, we missed. He had, a, he had an off or something. He was pushing hard there. You know, some of his fastest, some of his fastest, fastest lap of the race was uh, two laps ago, so... Um, yeah, you can see he was pushing hard. He just, he lost it. Well, Big Al Merriman has just put, he's down, dropped his times down into the 141s now, which is a, a decent lap times around here, boys. Yes, it is. And in race trim, absolutely. So he is going to be closing the gap there uh, up to uh, Mikey. So, 18 yeah, cars. He's closing, he's closing fast on those guys, isn't he? Yes, sir. 18 out of 31 still running at this time. And it looks like uh, everybody's very well spaced out just over to the uh, timing board. And everybody's spaced out really well. Well, uh, I'll tell you right now, Al Merriman is closing on Greatrix like a runaway freight train. Yes, sir. I'm on board with Greatrix right now, and looking back at Merriman, I don't know, man. Uh, looks yeah, he's pushing hard. He's got Pareto, I think, right behind him, too, so he's probably pushing extra hard now. Well, this is quite the showing for Anger Racing and the Vipers tonight. One, two. I'd love to see what they can do in our Vipers in GT2. I'd like Brad to give me some setup tips and some driving tips. <laughs> ah, you boys will get it. You know, it's just, it's just, you know. Well, I gotta say hey, now, Mr. Schubeck, while while we got you up here on the broadcast, seeing how you're in the inner sanctum, so to speak, can you give us any tidbits or tantalizing incentives for what might happen during the off season that's coming up? Uh, no plans have been made yet, but you know we'll see. Um, I have you know the season's still pretty 
we're pretty way, much halfway through the season, so, you know, off-season plans haven't really been brought up yet, but we'll come up with something. Well, you be sure and keep us broadcast boys in the loop. Yes, sir. No, don't worry. Whatever, whatever we're doing, we'll make sure you guys get it so you can practice first. There you go. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We we want it. We just want the inside scoop being broadcasters. Nah, I know. I'm no, that that that's okay. You can <laughs> give Jack Ken, Ken like the first. Yep, I want to be on the beta team. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I want to be on the beta team. Absolutely, I don't deny it. I want that competitive edge. Uh, you know, the Switchblade Nationals is always uh, something that might come up. I need to do some work on it still. Uh, I've been procrastinating a little bit on it, you know, but I got some work to do. Them, to try and get the, the Kudas in there and stuff, but... Them cars were fun. They were fun to drive. Yeah, you know, it seemed like it had a good, you know, showing and and everybody enjoyed themselves. So, but th there's some things I'm going to change to it, make it a little more interesting, you know, maybe even it out even a little more, you know. But there's no substitute for skill. Whoa, Ooh. guys, Andre Ooh. Prado has just lost it. Yeah, yep. he did a smart thing there. I saw that trying to lap some cars and uh whew, That was close. Yeah, so he, he has given up a few, given up a few seconds to uh, uh, Rich Roman, but uh, the, he still got an eight-second gap over Rich Roman for P3. Well, you got to understand yeah. that Mike Graytrix, Al Merriman, who just took P12 from Mike, they are battling for position. So uh, it's a fine balancing act right now when you come up on two, two drivers that are competing for position and you are lapping them. It's a balancing act. Yeah, that was definitely the valorous option, and plus he does not want to get any damage to that Viper. None at all. Absolutely not, because Rich will, Rich will, if he gets a little scratch in that Viper and it starts slowing him down, Rich will be coming. Well, he has only got four laps to go after he finishes this one. There will only be three laps left uh, in the race tonight, so uh, uh, he's definitely got to watch himself yeah, trying to overtake covered. these two guys. Yeah, exactly. He's got Rich covered, no problem, as long as he doesn't get himself into an incident here. Well, he has got himself around Mikey Gratrix, so he has just got to, you know, he's coming out onto the straight now, and it's a good opportunity for Al to let him through, so... Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, Al can let him by without letting Mikey back up onto his tailpipe again. Yeah, and Gup definitely hurt his car with whatever incident he had. He's falling down a little bit in pace, and his teammate's coming now. And he's coming quick. Yeah, but if you're going to have anybody chase you, your teammate's a good one to have because not too far behind them is Jonathan Cuppet. And exactly. he, can see, he can see them up ahead. Uh, I don't know if he's got the pace to close that gap and take those positions in the last few three laps, but, uh, you know, Jonathan's going to try hard. But good showing for Cuppet in uh, P11 right now. Yeah, definitely a respectable showing. And Gup. Gup holding down that ninth position. He was pushing hard for taking Marty, but, you know, something happened. We missed his off or whatever to break those headlights out. And they're contending with the leader right now, too, which is also a difficult thing to do. This is an easier track to do it at than most, but still, when you're racing, you know, and you get a leader coming up on you. Now we've just had an incident here. We've, we've got Rich has dropped back to P4, and Ludman has got by him. So John Ludden in the Pagani is now taking P3. But this is probably going to be a dogfight to the end here. They're less than, wow, they're less than uh, three quarters of a second uh, between them right now. 
Yeah, Rich's car looks wow, real loose. He may he might have been pushing hard to try and catch Andres, and, and it's, it's just it's just cooked his tires. Could very well be. That bet is fast, though. Damn. Yeah, he is yeah, struggling going through the chicane there. Now we've got Alex White in P5 and Aaron Parsons with the snowplow McLaren trying to close that gap up. And P7, we've got Ian Joelcourt. We haven't mentioned Ian uh, much tonight, but uh, boy, he is running one heck of a steady race, race in P7. And you know what? Uh, good on Ian because his right front quarter is all smashed up. He is running with no lights, which means he's got some rear damage as well. He's got some front damage going on there. Yeah, uh, right side of the whole car uh, looks like it's uh, pretty banged up. So good on Ian to keep that thing on the track. Wow, yeah, I was just looking at that. Running P42, or I'm sorry, lap 42. It looks like Jonathan's going to have something for... Uh... Uh, McIntyre here. Uh, he's he's coming. You are right there, Mr. Schubeck. He is smelling a uh, top ten. Both those car got, cars are going to have a good pace on this straight, and they both look pretty clean. So, be interesting. I don't know. Jonathan really looks hungry, doesn't he? He's coming. That Corvette has just got so much. Down the long straights. Uh, Mac defending. Good there. Oh, looks like Bjorn Heyman may have ran, almost ran out of fuel. He had to come into the pits on the last lap. Uh, pits? That's pits or break. cuts? Uh, could have been cuts. Well, we've got, we have got Brad Maris, guys, and I think this is going to be the last lap. I can't believe he's going to drive any slower than this because he has dropped three seconds off his last lap. Is he going to let Andre Prado uh, close up? I think he is. I think he's going to let Andre close up right behind him to finish this race off. Uh, he may be doing that for fuel consumption as well. I mean, he did pit a little bit earlier. So, uh, very possible, very possible that he is just uh, doing this for fuel con fuel conservation. You might be right there. He has just let one of the lap cars go by him. He is just pussyfooting through, in through the chicane. Which is something they wanted because that gives them another lap to battle it out. That was Mac and and Cuppet, right? That just went by. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So it looks like he's holding so pace Cuppet right now. Cuppet is going, thank you, and here he comes. He's got him on and the inside. It is Maris and Prado down to the finish line. One, there two, it is. Maris and Prado. Oh. And we have a scuttlebutt going nice. on Soto in the front. Finished. Uh, straight away I don't know who that was but that wasn't pretty but uh, Cuppet did get Mac uh, with this extra lap let's see if uh, McIntyre can uh, answer I'll keep an eye on yep I caught up with you there uh, because I know that that was a really good battle that was going on so yeah Cuppet getting by Johnny McIntyre Johnny McIntyre saying wait a minute not so fast I want that position back we got a little bit more racing to go but uh, will he be able to pull it off? I don't know, man. That Corvette just looks hooked up here on the last lap. Hey, he's pushing him hard, though. So this is going to be a good finish for those guys. So Jolliker coming around for seventh.
Marty, you're in an eighth. Oh, oh. Yeah, I think. He's oh, McIntyre. Should let him. Yeah. He's going to let him go by. Good on Johnny. Yeah, Mac. He went for it. He was going to try and outbreak him at that chicane. So, Douglas having a great finish. Cup and McIntyre finish. Al Merriman coming in 12th. Greatrix in 13th. Taylor 14th. Wilkerson 15th. Calderon in 16th. Bjorn Heyman in 17th. Well, guys, um, I wonder who picked tonight's winner. Oh, go ahead and gloat, Jack. Go ahead. You've earned it. Oh, yeah, but you know what? Uh, that's a heartbreak for Chris Moses. Yeah, it, it, that Viper definitely was uh, screaming. And like Chris said, it, it's something we didn't even consider was the, the rise in temperature was really hurting uh, Moses' car's pace, you know, something that we hadn't even considered. Um, but I think I think Brad all in all had him covered there towards the end. He was just flying. Well, highly unusual that in March we would see a 101 degree track temperature out here in uh, beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida, but uh, it did happen. I'm just going to grab Brad Maris. Yep. First stint and then ahead on stops, you know, and then had a lot of room. Hey, Brad Maris, broadcast racing. Wow, Check. what a performance by Anger Racing tonight. Yeah, yep, it was a good run. Andre has uh, put on a heck of a show with 30 kilos. Really sorry for Chris Moses going out. That was a serious bummer. I was uh, looking forward to beat him straight up on pace and well, just didn't happen. So sorry, sorry for Chris. Couldn't couldn't fight it fairly there toward the end. It yeah, sure it looked like that Chris, Viper had it some. It definitely looked like you had pace on him. Yeah, in the second stint, uh, it's kind of it's kind of driving like a donkey there for a couple laps in the first stint, but got it sorted. And I figured once I did, it looked like I was going to have pretty good late stint pace on Chris. So I figured once I got ahead on stops, I would uh, have a good shot at it. Well, you sure did. Uh, uh, quite the clinic. And talking about a clinic, I hope you're going to bring in your uh, race school in uh, in the off season, Brad, because uh, we got lots to learn from you. Yep, the instructors are all lined up and ready to go, Jack. So we'll get those signups uh, going, and uh, plenty plenty of instructors come on out, and we'll see what we can do. Well, there you Make go, sure folks. To pass Brad Maris, winner Daytona. Make sure to pass on. The uh, congratulations to Andres too, man. He did a great job holding off Rich, who was, who had his car trimmed out and was real fast tonight too. Yeah, I will. Thank you, guys. Thanks again, Brad. Brad, Brad Maris, race winner, Daytona. So, folks, uh, there you have it. Uh, Brad Maris and uh, Andres Prado, one and two, Anger Racing. Uh, we're going to have to see what this does to uh, the driver and team championships. I'm pretty sure this is going to push anger uh, further up the ladder now in the team championship. But uh, uh, we're going to have to see what it does for the uh, driver championship. Yeah, it's definitely Maris is going to move up. It's going to hurt Chris Moses, that's for sure. Uh, so it's going to be interesting going down to the wire here. Um, Hey, thanks, guys, for uh, having me up here tonight again. It's been a pleasure as usual. It's your show. We're just along for the ride, buddy. Absolutely. So uh, for Jack Ivey and Tom Shubes Schubeck, I am Ken Rodriguez, and we wish you all a good night. Thanks for joining us.